Okay, so um, in this lesson, we're going to go ahead here and continue detailing work, and we're going to make the dust grates for these little holes. Um, but before I go ahead and do that, I want to talk to you a little bit um, about doing a little bit of extra work off screen here. And you can see that we have two different pieces here for our metal portion. And <clears throat> the way I went about creating that was. I simply just selected some faces, um, extruded them off or separated them off, and just made some some minor adjustments. And you're you're free to go ahead and do that. Um, you don't have to, but I did that because whenever I go to texture this model, I want to just add a little bit of extra color to the model, and that's just going to give me a little bit more freedom to to go ahead and do that. So, um, with that said, let's go ahead here and make our dust crates for our our metal portion here and the easiest way for us to go ahead and do this is we're just simply going to go ahead and grab a polygon plane here and let's just go ahead and draw it out and I'm pressing X on my keyboard to just snap this to the grid okay and I'm just trying to make that even on both sides here and what I need to now go ahead and do here is just simply add some subdivisions width and height so just middle mouse drag and create as much as you want so 12 should be should be good for us and we'll go ahead here with the height of say something like 8 and that should give us enough resolution to go ahead and make all the circles that we need so let's just go ahead here and select the faces and if we extrude as it is it's going to extrude it completely which means that it's going to extrude it as a whole there's not going to be a a way to go ahead and separate this unless we come up here to edit mesh and turn this keep faces together check box off so now when we go ahead here and hit extrude if I just simply click on this little blue square and extrude this in you can see where it's going to extrude all these faces individually so now that we have that done let's just go ahead and delete those off okay and just select this entire thing turn the keep faces back together on okay we'll go ahead here and center the pivot come back to our polygon menu and we will just extrude this um, either up or down it doesn't really matter so let's just go ahead and extrude this up to give it some thickness here and that looks good so let's just go ahead here and add an edge loop to this um, on the bottom but us also here on the top okay and you can see that that now is going to give us a decent resolution and enough circles okay so let's go ahead and just try to place this and just have to basically pull this down and I'm hitting F here to frame in on the model and we'll go ahead and just basically scale this down and we just need to go ahead and bring that down into place here. And we'll go ahead and push this over a little bit. And you can see where we now have all the sewer grate circles there. Okay. So let's go ahead and just freeze the transformation on that. And I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that over here to the other side. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead now and add our edge loops in for um, these sewer grade holes. And I'm just doing one there. A um, couple here on the inside so that it's going to maintain its shape. And that looks good on that side. So let's go over here and do the other side. Edge loop again right in the middle. And then one on the top and one on the bottom you can see where that's going to maintain its shape okay so now let's come up here and separate our metal portion here so we have a bunch of different pieces and let's just go here and go ahead and add all that except for the metal portion to its own layer or there and then we can just simply go ahead and bring that back when when we need to so now let's just go ahead and take a look at our geometry here ok 
Okay. And what we need to go ahead and do now is just separate all these little pieces off. And if we look at our top image, we have a black piece here. And let's go ahead here and look at our side view. We also have one here on the side. And I just want to make sure that I have the same amount of faces on both sides. Okay. And I need to go ahead and just draw two more here on the other side just to to match those ones okay and I'll just go ahead here and grab these verts grab these verts and I'm just gonna basically match these up okay and I'm also gonna match those other two up as you can see and I'll just use the scale tool to basically flatten them out and making sure that they match together. Okay, so we'll go ahead here and move this down and we will go ahead here and put that in place as well. And I'm just making that a little bit larger so that I have a decent resolution whenever I go ahead and basically cut it apart here. So let's go ahead here and select the faces that we need to get separated here. And we obviously need that one. We need this row. And we need this row here. Let's just take a look to see if we see anything else. And I want to go ahead here and just change my <coughs> background image. I can do that later. Okay, we have all those basically there. And there's nothing here on the top. Okay, so let's just go ahead here and come back into our perspective view. Okay, and we'll just come up here to Mesh, Extract, and you can see that we now have those pieces all cut off and they're all individual pieces. Okay, so now I just want to go ahead and recombine them. basically okay and you can see where they're not going to be basically um, merged or it's not going to merge the verts and just go into edge mode and just double select the entire edge of this and you just have to select all the, the indiv individual edge parts here okay and I'm just double clicking on one edge and it'll select the entire edge okay so let's go ahead and bring all those pieces back we'll go ahead and just simply delete the layer and we're just gonna go ahead and extrude this in um, individually here as you can see and uniformly so now whenever we smooth it you can see that there are um, different meshes if you also look at the top there okay so now let's just go ahead and turn that port, um, turn that back off. So we'll just go ahead and select everything. Just deselect that metal portion. Just re-add that to a to a layer. And now we just need to go ahead and add some edge loops here. And this is just so that we can really maintain a a fairly hard edge whenever we render it. So we'll just simply go ahead and add, add some edge loops here and this will just take a little bit of time to get all these edge loops in here okay and you can see where that's going to maintain that really nice edge so let's go ahead and separate all this stuff and as we get these edges all placed we'll just go ahead and add it to um, a layer and then that way we can just you know hide them as as we go along and continue just working out some details so that one is done let's go ahead and add edge loops for this little piece and this is going to allow us to add a lot of extra color to it whenever we go to to texture this model and you can see where I'm just simply adding some some edge loops here and you can see that that's going to maintain its shape properly so let's go ahead and add that to its own layer grab this other piece and we will go ahead and
add the edge loops for this. Okay, come over here to the other side. Just add the edge loop here for the top. Okay, add this to its own layer, or to the layer. And just add the edge loops for this as well. And you basically just want to add edge loops um, all the way around on all four sides. And you can see that that's adding and maintaining that shape properly. So let's go ahead and add that to that layer. Let's go ahead and do this piece. And you just simply have to work your way around. And if you do it properly, you shouldn't really have too much of a problem. So we get that one done. And that's going to maintain its shape. So let's come up here to the top for this piece. And we will go ahead and add the edge loop for this. But also want to maybe just draw another one in here so that it's going to smooth a little better. Let's go ahead and add that to that layer. And let's go ahead and frame it on this last piece here. And we'll go ahead and draw all the remaining edge loops for this. draw one on the bottom and one on the top there too. Okay, let's go ahead and bring all those back. And you, we're just going to go ahead here and turn the wireframe off just to make sure that that's looking looking good. Okay, and you can see where that's going to maintain its shape there. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring the rest of these pieces back here and before I go ahead and start making any more edits I want to go ahead here and open the outliner and you can see where this is <laughs> somewhat confusing so what I want to do now is just simply clean this up a little bit so that I know exactly what's what and um, I can keep a little bit more organized here so let's just go ahead and grab this and we'll just go ahead and shift P take that completely out of that group and we'll call this bottom um, bottom USB piece 2 okay and we'll call this metal okay just go ahead and basically take these out as um, USB piece and I'm just dragging these down to the bottom so that I can go ahead and group these uh, into one big group and we'll go ahead and grab all these little buttons just to make sure that we have all this proper okay so grab those pieces and we'll just go ahead and basically just add that all to one group and I'm gonna grab these as well and you can see that this is definitely just gonna take a little bit of a little bit of time and effort to go ahead and grab all this stuff and basically get it lined up properly and organized okay so let's go ahead and grab these and I'm basically just grouping them thinking long term of you know when I go to texture this I, it's gonna be much easier for me to just simply grab one thing hit up on my keyboard and apply shader to the entire thing okay so let's go ahead and grab these call these side buttons and we will go ahead and okay that's all grouped fine so let's go ahead and rename this as body and we'll just take that out of the group there okay okay and that looks like we have everything the way we want there okay 
Let's go ahead and bring this face stuff back. Call it glass. Okay. And just rename that to screen. Okay. That looks fine. So now I'm just going to go ahead here and just hit Control G with nothing selected and create a, an all group. And I'll just go ahead and rename this as iPhone Main. And just go ahead and select all the pieces for the for the phone here. And you can simply just do this individually, or um, actually just grab this in the scene as well. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and drag that on top of this this iPhone main group and now you can see that we have um, everything in there except for the screen pieces so let's go ahead and put that in there and now you can see that we have all that stuff grouped but it's still um, sort of going to maintain its all own layer you just have to you know might have to just re-add that stuff to the layer and that's fine um, that's really no big deal. Just now make sure that we have all this camera stuff selected. Camera main. Okay, and we have to do this for the back one. So camera small back. And naming conventions somewhat important as long as you, you know, know what's what and are fairly organized. You shouldn't necessarily have a problem in terms of getting all that stuff done right okay so now that we have all that pretty much added to its own layer there we can call this an end for this lesson and in the next lesson we'll come back and uh, start working on the home button